Next up is Andy Eschbacher, who works at Cardo as a data scientist. His projects range from helping clients solve logistics problems using spatial variants of convex optimization, running a community learning meetup in Brooklyn centered on spatial concepts, and trying to hack it as a Python developer. He lives in Manhattan with his wife and three-month-old son. Thank you, Andy. Um, hello, my name is Andy Eschbacher. Um, thanks for coming to my talk today. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, a project that's been really fun that I got involved with uh, about maybe six months ago here at Cardo, um, where we were trying to solve a problem that we faced every day, and we wanted to remove a roadblock to make our lives a lot easier, but it ended up being um, something that's going to make other people's lives easier as well. So I've been spending the last three to four months on it or so, trying to make it really good. Um, so just a little bit about me. I'm not a cartographer. I'm not a software developer. I'm a data scientist, whatever that is, um, on Cardo's research team. And uh, we're, we're a, small, um, a small team on Cardo. Uh, we have five people. And uh, in some ways, we act as like a professional develop or what is it, professional services for some of our clients who have um, kind of special requests for different types of analyses that need to be done. Um, I've been working in linear optimization the last six months as well. Um, it's an area that I have some familiarity with, um, being with a background in physics. Um, but we have we have to like specialize in those those sorts of situations sometimes. Um, but we also work with companies who have data scientists who want to use our product better or um, learn how to integrate some other open source software. Uh, so in some ways, we're kind of an incubator, um, like a little incubator within Cardo, that, where we try to dream up cool new things that we can do with our platform and with the goal of maybe building it into our platform in the future. And we've been successful. Um, in some of those ways, and what I'm going to be talking about today is one of those things that we're, we're going to be releasing, but it's not been announced yet, so don't tell anybody. Um, so it looks like a brain. It just happens to be how I chose the area around London. Um, I just got um, a circle and lat long coordinates, and so it's a little distorted from the projection. Um, but the goal, the goal for this project, just to give you um, some flavor of what we do on our team, was we have a client who has to pick up waste, like recycling or trash, throughout the UK. And they need to get rid of 100% of the waste in each of the neighborhoods. And they needed to send it to a processing plant. But the processing plant can't go over capacity. And um, they also want to reduce costs as well. So there's a cost associated with transporting a ton of waste um, on, based off road miles. And then each processing plant has a different cost for processing a ton of waste. And so you want to look at all of the combinations that you can for how to get stuff from A to B. And you can even do fractional parts of like 20% of the waste in this area goes to this place and the other 80% goes somewhere else. And you might also have some fixed constraints, like where you might have like a um, hazardous waste that needs to be processed at a very specific type of plant. And so they gave us all of these requirements. And to me, this is really fun, looking at problems like this and using math to, to try to solve it. And, and so I spent um, a while working on it. And we were able to implement it in Cardo using Python. Um, the, way, the way I generally work um, on our team is I, I work in Python quite a bit. Um, and then and Jupyter Notebooks generally. Sometimes um, we'll write um, some, some custom scripts or something. And then uh, after we, we feel like we have a good workflow established there, we build it into a function that can be used with Cardo for that client. Um, but the workflow had a lot of problems because we were working in a Jupyter Notebook. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll introduce that in a minute. Um, because we would be working in the notebook. We'd be generating our analysis. We'd output it to a CSV. Then we'd um, drag and drop it into Cardo, and we'd get the table there, and we'd look at it and realize something wasn't quite right, so we'd go back to the notebook. And so we end up in this, it's like when you're writing a, a paper when you're a, um, an undergrad, and you have that Word doc that has like final, underscore final, really, sort of thing. And so we end up with tons of, 
tables that aren't very useful in our accounts, and same with the maps. Um, things are redundant and out of date. And then the context switching is really hard and, and it really slows down the workflow. And then we needed to iterate quickly on data, um, going between data analysis and map all the time. And so we would always create these kind of like stopgap gap functions that would like push a CSV to Cardo, um, but we needed something that was a lot more dynamic and kind of we could build into um, maybe like a larger pipeline or something like that. Um, and so the goal of our team is to make it work, make it right, make it fast, but since we're here at NASIS, um, make great cartography, and so I wanted to talk about that aspect of it today. Um, if you're not familiar with Python, it's a really wonderful programming language. It's very easy to learn. Um, it has a really active community, and you can probably find a Python package to do anything you want, like launch a rocket or something like that. Um, and this is a standard way to introduce Python to people. It's an XKCD comic that I think is pretty funny. Um, so that's my, my main language for, for doing analysis. Um, I also use SQL and um, we have um, Postis database and JavaScript and all sorts of other little things here and there. Um, and, but the way we generally do our analysis and present it within our team is within a Jupyter notebook. If you've not used these before, they're really wonderful for showing reproducible workflows or just for doing exploratory data analysis. Um, there, let me, I think I have a link here that we can just open up. Um, you've probably seen them on the web if you're not familiar with them um, without realizing that um, what they are. What's really great about it is you can have a narrative to like to discuss your problem statement. You can include images. You can have equations. Um, and then you can also have code in there too and it runs in a Python kernel. And so you can evaluate the code, get the results, and communicate everything kind of as one document that um, shows the work that you're doing. Um, so there's some equations. Um, there's some plots. No maps on this one, but I'm gonna talk about the map part of it. Um, and there, um, Jupyter notebooks are amazing. Um, I used to be a high school physics teacher and I would teach with them and um, my students liked them because they could reproduce what I was doing. They could like modify stuff to experiment more. It was a really, really good way to teach physics because physics is about exploring the world and you can use the equations within the notebook to help teach that. Um, but maps are, I think, still an area that Jupyter Notebooks can be improved upon. Uh, there's a package called GeoPandas that you can do mapping in. Um, anybody notice something wrong with this map or have any comments? Uh, I'm sorry? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's like all smushed. Um, <laughs> technical term. Um, it doesn't have legends by default, which, you know, that's not great. Um, I think it, it's, you know, it's all right. Um, I think there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and this is probably the easiest way to get a map in, in Python or a Jupyter notebook that, I, that I'm aware of. If somebody knows something better, let me know. Um, it's not easily explorable. This is just a raster image. And so, You'd have to like subset your data for a specific country or something to get like a more zoomed in image. It's it's not easy to work with to, if you're trying to do data um, ex like that data exploration. Um, so that's just like one line of code. So it's kind of nice. You get a map with one line of code. Um, but if you want to get fancier, you can use a really common plotting library in Python called Matplotlib, and you can get a much nicer map. You can do projections. Um, but it requires like that much code, which, you know, if you're just doing like exploratory data analysis in your notebook, you don't want to spend a half hour going back and forth between Stack Overflow to look up all of the arcane rules of Matplotlib. Um, if you've ever used Matplotlib before, it's easy to get started, but it's super hard if you want to do anything custom. It's, um, it's I find it very difficult. Um, but you can get legends. You see the basic legend there. Um, um, and then there are other packages. Um, I haven't used this one too much, but it brings interactive maps into a Jupyter notebook, which is nice. 
it's pretty sparse as far as I can tell. I don't think legends are supported. Um, I think you could probably do some stuff to bring in leaflet leg legends onto it. Um, but I think there's much to be desired still if you're gonna do data exploration with maps in a, new, in a notebook here. Uh, there's this one um, came out pretty recently. Um, it's pretty nice. You have to run it on your own server. Um, it's hard to get set up. You have to run your own Mapnik server or tiling server to get it going. Um, it seems like a bit too specific for kind of like a generalist, general data science or um, anybody who would just be wanting to make maps connected to data. Um, it seems pretty powerful, but it still doesn't seem like the right tool for the job. And so we created something um, called Cardo Frames. And um, I have a lot of GIFs to kind of demo what's going on here. Um, some of the key lines are you create something called a Cardo Context that it, it connects to your Cardo account, so you have access to all the data, all of our APIs and stuff like that. And with one line of code, you can create maps that are interactive. Um, I'll talk a bit more about some of the cartographic defaults in a minute. Um, you can create static maps that are exactly th like the, the interactive view that you just had. Um, you can do pretty basic, or um, some like easy styling language off of it, um, or you can just overwrite everything and do your own um, custom Cardo CSS if you want to. If you want to go wild, um, there's still a lot of work to be done to get some of the cartographic defaults down. Um, but this is this is um, kind of the state of it right now. So what's going on here is. Um, it's coloring by a string column, um, so it's just a category. It's detecting that it's a string column and that there are some categories that you can assign to it. And, and then it um, grabbed 10 category, or 10 colors to go with those categories from, um, uh, uh, from something we called Cardo Colors that Mamatha invented, it's color palettes. Um, you can do um, our animated maps in this as well with just saying that there's a time column equal to time. You can change base maps, all sorts of stuff like that. So this is what we've been wanting for the last two years at Cardo, and finally I got it to carve away some time to build it. Um, so some of the goals of it is to not ever go to cardo.com. Um, you can just stay in the notebook, totally. I'm trying to recreate Cardo, but don't tell my company. Um, but you, you want to stay in the notebook, generally. Context switching is hard, we all know that. Um, and if you can have a reproducible workflow that includes the maps that you want as part of your analysis, that's a really big win. Um, we want to leverage Cardo services. Cardo has a lot of services that we can leverage to take advantage of if you have a data set that just has like country name on it and you want to grab the polygons, you can send an instruction to Cardo to do that and get a table with the polygons and then create a derivative map off of that. Um, the reproducible workflows, I keep talking about that. Um, having a science background, that's like a really killer feature of notebooks that I really love. Um, and then the thing that I've been working on the last two weeks to prepare for this talks are sensible and dynamic defaults um, for cartography, and I'll show some of those. And, and another goal is just to make it easy to use. So we want a really simple interface for using Cardo frames. Um, so the first point that I had there is um, Cardo without leaving a notebook. So these first five operations are a lot of the things that you can do in Cardo with the user interface. Now you can do them programmatically in a Jupyter notebook. So the first one, you can read a table. So you get a, a SQL table that's cloned into a pandas data frame. So it's just a tabular data store that has a lot of, um, it's kind of a de facto standard for doing data science in Python. You can, if you have a data frame, you can send it to Cardo as a table. So the inverse operation. Um, it also, Cardo frames is also compatible with, um, with GeoPandas as well. So if you wanna send a Geo data frame. Uh, you can do some uh, arbitrarily, long, arbitrarily long SQL query against any, any of the da data sets that you have in your Cardo account. So you're not limited to just reading tables. You can read arbitrary queries and get those into data frames. Um, you can delete tables, and then the map part is what I'm gonna be talking about most of all today. And there's a lot more coming soon. Um, so leveraging Cardo services. Um, so one thing that um, when I was doing a survey of uh, the state of web maps, 
um, in Jupyter Notebooks is animated maps aren't very common or sometimes you have to do kind of like a custom, custom job to make it happen. And so just um, by doing that time equals the time column field, you get an animated map right away. So as few lines of code as possible is the goal here. And without, without trying to, without, um, without taking away any of the power because you still have a lot of flexibility for how you declare things. Um, Cardo has a lot of location data, data services baked in. Um, Cloud-based data storage, so if you share, if you share a dynamic map, um, it still points to the same data source. Um, uh, Postgres database, so you can do any geoprocessing you want directly from the notebook. It hits Cardo servers and you pull that back the data that you want. Um, Cardo colors, so the color palettes that Mamatha did, um, created, and then there's a lot more coming. Um, so the reproducible workflows um, in the Cardo frames is open source, and so if you go to uh, GitHub slash CardoDB slash Cardo frames, which I'll link to in a minute again, we have a bunch of example notebooks. And so if you want to get started on Cardo frames, um, there's this kind of reproducible tutorial that you can use to do it. Um, and it just kind of demos like how you'd go through a problem. You're looking at the data, you load a taxi data set, and it's kind of strange. You thought it was New York City, but you get this stuff at Null Island. So you can use pandas to filter out the Null Island stuff, overwrite the table on Cardo, and then you get a map that's kind of like this, where you get all of the New York stuff, but get rid of the other stuff that you don't want. So it's just kind of a basic workflow of how you might use it, and then maybe you want to look at what's going on at JFK, and then the fare prices for all of the taxis. Um, some of the defaults that we have in Cardo frames, uh, we just announced, I think a week or two ago, that we have a new base map that's um, free to use with attribution called Voyager that Mammoth had designed. Um, so that's the, the default base map in Cardo frames. Um, some, of the, some of the cartographic defaults were some of the most fun things to code up here. Um, so base map labels respond to the geometry type. So if you have a point data set, you don't want the labels to be on top of the points because it'll cover it up. And so Cardo frames will, if you don't declare a base map, um, Cardo frames will detect the type of geometry that you have and then put the labels on the bottom or the top depending. And so what I'm showing here is we have a polygon data set and the labels are on top and then the base map without the labels are below it. Um, marker outlines that respond to the base map. So if you have a dark base map, the marker outlines are darker. If you have a lighter base map, the, the marker outlines are lighter so that you can highlight the markers. And um, Cardo colors everywhere that we, ha that we can and um, support for any other colors that you can dream of too. And there's a lot more coming, but these are just some of the main ones. Um, it's programmatic, so if you want to do like small multiples based off of different things, you can just use that um, CardoFrames.map function and then just pass in different variable names and then different, um, different like swatches or whatever you want to, to style them differently. So you can do all of that natively in Python and Matplotlib. So now demo. Uh, I like live demos because sometimes something exciting happens besides it breaking. Um, Okay, so what we're doing here, we're just getting the Cardo context um, that allows us to connect to Cardo. Um, if you've ever used Pandas before, it's a, um, it's, it has a lot of really great functionality for like scraping, so it uses things like Beautiful Soup to scrape web pages. What I'm doing here is, let's say that we want to make a map of life expectancy. On this Wikipedia page, there's an HTML table that has life expectancy, and we can use Pandas to scrape it. And so it's going to go to that web page, find that HTML table, and then pull it down into a data frame if the internet cooperates. Mm -hmm. I have a baked pie in the oven if this doesn't work. OK. Shoot. Interrupt. Okay, so I have a CSV of that same thing, and I'm gonna to pretend to write it to it so we don't have to do the, the internet. I have a table called life expectancy two 
it's the same thing that I did, that I prepared beforehand. Um, and what was going on with this write operation, we're using Cardo's services to say, hey, there's a column in here that you probably want to geocode, please find it. And in the data set that we had, there's a column called country. And so Cardo will find that, grab the geometries for it, and then we can create a map off of it. And if we say that we want to create a choropleth off of both sexes life expectancy, we can quickly get that. So like within a minute, you can go from a Wikipedia page with a table to having a, a map that you can explore. So that's kind of the goal that we want here is like really quick exploration and being able to iterate quickly. Um, doo -doo -doo. And legends are coming soon. You didn't see the legends, but I have an open pull request um, that I link to here and I'll share my slides on Twitter afterwards if you want them. Um, and then another thing is I'd love some feedback on this. Um, this has been a really fun and really hard project um, to do, um, but I, I do need, especially from this community, to get the cartography, like to really nail the cartography, I'd love some feedback. And so that could be opening GitHub issues, finding me afterwards, and or asking me hard questions in just a second. Thank you.